first of all, how difficult is it right now as a player, given the circumstances? How do you focus on just trying to keep things normal, training, training and playing? It's really tough, to be honest. Uh, I think it's the world we're living in right now. And, you know, we have to take it day by day. Things are always changing. Uh, at Reading, we're doing a really good job with regards to trying to keep safe. But I think the main thing is, as individuals, away from football and during training, we're as safe as we possibly can be. But I found it tough because it's a team sport. You know, you want to be close. You know, when you go in, you want to give your teammates a hug. And, you know, we're not allowed to do that. We're all in different changing rooms. Sometimes we have to train at different times. There's a lot of protocols now. But like I said, it's the world we're living in right now. And we need to keep safe and keep doing the right things. But it's really tough. Yeah, you, you've just had the, the winter break, um, which, which always is a puzzle to me, because give us an insight what it's like for, for players. You've got to balance, I guess, staying in, in good shape and also getting the right amount of rest. So how do you do that? Yeah, you know, Christmas is probably one of my favourite times of the year. And, you know, having played professionally for 15 years now, I'm kind of used to, you know, how to balance the mentally taking a break, you know, having a couple of days off over the Christmas period where you switch off, you get to see your friends and family, you know, eat good food, maybe let your hair down a little bit. But it's also key that you come back after the Christmas break, hitting the ground running. You know, it's an important part of the year. Every game for us is important. So... Yeah, for myself personally, I don't like to have too much time off. Um, I had a couple of days off, you know, Christmas and maybe Boxing Day, but the rest of the days I was, you know, ticking over. We got set of programs. We did four or five different running sessions in the gym as well. So, you know, it, we're professional football players. You know, we've been doing this for a long time, and but Christmas was lovely. Yeah, but I bet you, did, you didn't want to stop, did you? Because your last game was that memorable win over Chelsea back on December the 11th. We spoke to your manager, Kelly Chambers, live on the show before that game. It was fascinating to see uh, what she was saying that day. But how much of a feel-good factor does beating the champions create? Oh, do you know what? It was incredible. We're, we're all football players. We all want to win every game. But let's be honest, I don't think anyone thought that we were going to be winning this game. We wanted to go in and we wanted to be competitive and give Chelsea a tough game. But you look at their, their squads, you know, they could field two 11 side teams and, they, you know, they've got players nominated for best player in the world. They are probably one of the best teams in Europe. And, you know, there's no hiding away. We have a very small squad. You know, we have players like Tash Harding, who's a centre forward playing at centre half. Justine, who's a midfield player playing at centre half. So, you know, we all had to really dig in deep and, you know, play, play basically the game of our lives. And it was a great feeling after the game um, to obviously beat that team and, you know, we're unbeaten in five games now. So for us, you know, we're on a really good roll. And I think we're really excited now uh, for part two of the season. You all right? Hey, Lee, you okay, mate? Yeah, not too bad. We saw the Anna Rose scoring that winning goal there against Chelsea and in the summer, you know, after winning the Olympic gold medal. What's she like to play with in the front line? Yeah, Dee's a great girl. You know, we get on really well on and off the pitch, which I think is really key. You being a centre forward yourself, you know how important it is that you have that good relationship on and off the pitch. And I think the exciting thing for me is that she's come from college football. This is her first professional, you know, contract. Um, and I think, you know, to have the impact that she's had already for us as a team, but also in the league, um, and this, like I said, is her first taste of being a professional football player. It's exciting times. I think we both complement each other very well. I wish I had her pace. Um, you know, she's lightning quick. Um, but I think, you know, me and her and, and the team, she's had a massive impact. And you can tell defences are so scared of her. You, knew, you just watched that goal there against Chelsea. The way the back four, five dropped off and wouldn't engage with her because... They knew how quick she was. If that had been me running at them, they would have just come and tackled me straight away. So I think, you know, she's a great girl and I'm excited to see her development over her. Uh, she signed a two-year contract here at Reading, so I'm excited to see how she develops. Yeah, Tash, don't do yourself down. Don't do yourself down. <laughs> because you were nominated for Player of the Month in November, two goals in three games. So uh, how happy have you been with your form since joining? You know, it was really nice to get nominated. Um, I've actually never really had injuries in my career and I came into Reading uh, with a really bad Achilles injury. And to be honest, 
at the start of the season, I wasn't even able to walk. So I was not in um, the best place physically. Um, so I've been working really, really hard to get myself back fully fit. And it's probably only the last probably couple of weeks that I've been 100%. So to be nominated when I was probably a, a long way off being, you know, at my best was, you know, a big confidence booster for me. Um, and, you know, I've got some big goals for the second part of this season. I've come here to score goals um, like I always have. And I really want to push Reading as high up the table as I can. So I'm just excited now to be fully fit. Um, and I've been really enjoying my football here at Reading. So, yeah, bring on the second half of the season. Yeah, Tash, I mean, you, like myself, played all over the world in many different countries and you've scored goals everywhere you've gone. Do you think that by going overseas, you know, it's enhanced your opportunities playing for England or do you think that's impacted you in a way that you never thought it would? Because for me, you know, you, you've scored everywhere you've gone and I don't think you've quite been given the opportunity you deserve. So do you think going overseas has helped you? I appreciate that, Leanne. Um, I think for me... Um, England obviously has always been an aspiration of mine and I've had a glimpse of it and every player wants to play for their country and you know I can openly admit that I think my goal scoring record I would have loved to have had more of an opportunity on the international scene but it hasn't happened for whatever reason you know and I've learned to kind of deal with that now and I think that I will never change playing abroad is by far the best de decision I've ever done you know to have played in six different countries you know Last year in Italy, the language barrier, playing in America, I think has developed me not just physically, uh, but mentally. You know, I've you know played in so many different um, cultures, different kind of footballing styles. So I think that was a big reason why I wanted to come back to England. Um, I didn't really have any aspirations, to be honest, to come back. Um, but I think having been away for six, seven years now, I wanted to come back and actually test myself in this league again because it really has been growing and developing and to show everyone um, how I've developed as a player, you know, being a captain and, you know, I'm, I'm 33 now. So, you know, I, I'm a mature player, I guess. Um, but yeah, by far playing abroad is the best thing I've ever done. And I'm sure I'm going to continue to play abroad again. I'd recommend it to any player because it really does, you know, change really your life in general, to be honest. So I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, quite literally, almost all four corners of the world, isn't it? Australia, USA, Sweden, Norway, uh, Italy. Uh, it, it's, it's been a magnificent journey, but this weekend it's Leicester, uh, isn't it? Um, they've got a new manager in uh, Lydia Bedford. Right, is, is that tricky? What are you expecting from them? You know, Lydia's actually a really good friend of mine. I remember when she played for Barnet Reserves and I used to train with them when I was actually playing for Everton at the time. Um, so we're actually really good friends and I'm really happy to see how she's developed as a coach. So um, I think it's going to be a really tough game for us. They obviously had a great result against Birmingham before the Christmas break, winning 2-0. So they'll be full of confidence and I think they'll obviously want to have a stronger second half of the season. They're a team that, you know, they're great on the counter-attack. They've got a lot of pace up front. So we need to be aware of that and we've done our homework on them and been working hard this week on how we're going to you know, go up against them. But I think for us, it's about focusing on us. Like I said earlier, we're in great form, unbeaten in five games uh, and full of confidence. You know, we've got a new signing, um, Sane, the new Danish midfield player, really experienced Danish, Danish international. So that's really exciting to have a new face in the squad as well for this weekend. Um, and yeah, it's a must win for us. Every game is.